Southeast Baltimore hit by a pre-dawn crime spree. Armed robberies and carjackings pulled off and attempted largely between 4 and 6 a.m. I think people get, you know, obviously the people are a little on edge. Um, That's according to community and elected leaders, plus residents and private surveillance footage. And it was a, a spree of them, um, I, according to Southeast District uh, Command Staff. There's a whole gang of poo shiesties right there. Um, from, prob I guess, around midnight till, uh, till 6 a.m., with most being in that, like, 5 to 6 a.m., Time frame. A large group of suspects seen using two vehicles quickly surrounding lone individuals. This cannot be tolerated. <laughs> I mean, like, listen, man, I will say this, man. Um, the slow drip of this in every single city versus the one incident in Maine. I will say this, though. That glider does deserve press. I will say that. Yeah, he, like, he deserves. Fuck yeah, then, that's an atrocity. And, and then some. Yeah, like I mean, he 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 literally like did unspeakable, and then he still on the loose. So that story is getting the right amount of coverage. Don't get me wrong, but the slow drip of this the. Of this in every single city. So this is not just happening. Well, this happening in right. every single city. I think it's the force for the trees, man. It's the force for the tree. When you ride down the fucking highway, and the trees is a million trees. Well, also in America, it's just understood that you know when you go out, some people are gonna rob you and shit. Like when you walk out in the tall grass, you're gonna get ticks on your legs. Mm. I mean, nobody gets, hey. you know, they're not like running stories about ticks out there. You know, they're not going to get that. Yeah. It's too much commonplace. Exactly, mm. man. This is just, because this is, this right here, this is unacceptable. Like, yeah, 100%. This, this right here, like, this is, this is, a, if, if, if you got groups of dudes doing this in your city, man, like, yeah. oh, what the fuck? You know, I, I just wish that everybody saw it that way, but they don't. They can't. And I fucking hate it. Like 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 if I like it like if I'm over here yelling like like it's like I'm yelling the emperor has no clothes and I'm the only one that can see it. That's how it feels like out here, you know? Yeah, this is this is happening in DC. Like this right here. It's happening in DC. It's happening in Glen Burnie. It's happening. It's not, it's, in, it's it's not happening. happening in Chicago, I'll tell you that much. It's happening in fucking Colombia. It's, hap it's happening in every little city. Tulsa. Between... No, but it's happening in every city around Baltimore. Like, it's happening in all of the Towson. It's happening every, you know, it's, it's happening all the, anywhere. Like, if you were in Baltimore, right, and you were, like, driving around the Beltway or whatever they have. I don't know if they have a Beltway in Baltimore, but they have something that goes around the city. Every single exit, you know, exits have a name. Blah, blah, blah. That place has this going on. And I mean, I, I get that there's no solution, right? I get that there's no solution, but can we try? Can we try something? Well, this guy's got it covered right here. This guy right here. Of them, um, I, according to Southeast District uh, Command Staff, it was they had nine incidents um, from. <laughs> I guess around midnight till uh, till 6 a.m. with most being in that like 5 to 6 a.m. time frame. A large group of suspects seen using two vehicles quickly surrounding lone individuals. It cannot be tolerated. Neighborhood association leaders are urging people who live in Canton, Patterson Park, Butchers Hill, Highland Town to check their security camera footage if they have it, to call 911 if they're the victim of a crime, to never fight back, and to be aware of their surroundings. We need to apprehend these individuals and hold them fully accountable to the fullest extent of the law. We're not Zeke Cohen. Yikes. <laughs> Yo, did she say be aware of your surroundings? Sounds kind of racist. Yeah, this is a co coincidence. <laughs> 
shysty of sun teens could appear at any moment. Mm. We're not talking about childhood mischief here. We're talking about violent <laughs> assaults, including on elderly folks, on just people out in the neighborhood. It's creating an aura of fear in our communities. Neighborhood association leaders say they are in close contact with Southeast District investigators and urge anybody with information or footage to get in touch, saying even small details can help this case. They also urge lawmakers in Annapolis. I think the to subjects, the suspects had big lips. <coughs> Yo, but let's be honest, guys. Public safety is overrated anyway. Yeah, man. I mean, the fact that they did that nine times between what they say, between 12 and 6 a.m., um, and they're still not caught in a city that's over police. This isn't like Maine where the police are like, all right, now we're, we're here, but uh, we, we were lulled to sleep. Like Baltimore, literally, the police like are literally, the streets are teeming with police. It just goes to show you how hard it is to police brazen crime. Because if you're just going to be brazen and do that shit, and it's a lot of different crews doing it, like, we don't know. For instance, the Baltimore police could have picked up a couple of crews last night doing that. And this is just the one that didn't get caught that night. Because it's so much crime. Right. And I'll do you one better. I'll, too. I'll do you another one. Those young gentlemen, right? When If and when they get caught, they're going to be sentenced to, like, go to some program, right? And how to, like, I don't know, not carjack or some shit. That that class, the, imagine those these young gentlemen sitting in that room. How hilarious! Though you know that, come on, man, you know what I'm talking about. They'll be in there on like uninterested, and re, though you're gonna be, get a contact high just being around them in that room. And and then when they're done, they're gonna go out and probably on the on the way home they're gonna take a car, take a car to get home. Most likely. All details can help this case. They also urge lawmakers in Annapolis to take up changes to the state's juvenile justice reform measure to ensure that it includes consequences and follow through. In Patterson Park, I'm Kate Amar. They have to make sure that the juvenile justice includes consequences. That's something you wouldn't hear in a, <laughs> in a glider area. You wouldn't have to tell. It wouldn't be like, all right, we got to make sure that the punishment includes consequences and follow through. That's a privilege. That's a privilege that black people, um, a silent privilege that they never like to talk about. The fact that like, yo, you get treated like little kids, man. Yeah. You know? That's exhausting. But I mean, to be fair, how, to be fair, in all honesty, making these young son kids do like a two-page paper or a five essay, whatever, five paragraph essay, is cool and unusual. They can't read or write, bro. Yeah. Um, shit. They could write raps, though. Ace Academy is where the story begins for one Baltimore City student anxious to land a job in the real world. Kanye Anderson is a recent high school graduate, a former summer intern, and now a Baltimore City school employee. I was tagging in furniture, equipment, and supplies. It's for schools. But Anderson knew he wanted more. Then we moved over to the maintenance department, and you could see that this is what he had a knack for. He liked to work with his hands. He wanted to do something different. We call up with Kanye Anderson at the Mount Washington School, wrapping up a maintenance job. He's taking a path the state would like for more students to follow. A blueprint for Maryland's future committee wants to increase the number of apprenticeship programs to 60,000 in seven years and to ensure that at least 45% of high school students complete apprenticeship programs by 20. I mean, like, look at that. 60,000 apprenticeships? Like, yo, like, like God. What a blessing, right? Hell yeah. Like, if you're a fucking kid in Baltimore, man, there's 60,000 available slots, man. Or 
could pursue your dreams as a squeegee boy. <laughs> the fact that they have squeegee boys lets you know that those guys enjoy being on the street. They enjoy the freedom. Enjoy, you know, being able to just be losers and not not have to fulfill their potential because this is available. I mean, you're your own boss, huh? If you're a squeegee boy, you're your own boss. Yeah. You make your own schedule. Huh? You can't beat that. Right. And and you just take what you want. Um, this, you just walk in and they is, just say, here you go. Here's a job. Yeah, this is this is amazing. Like, this is not nothing to shake a stick at. That's a lot of goddamn slots, man. Like if it was if it was sixty slots, we have sixty slots for graduating Baltimore seniors. That shit would be fucking like, yo, we gotta get one of them sixty slots, man. They got sixty thousand. Is that the goal for Baltimore City? That's definitely the goal for Baltimore City. We want clear pathways for our students. The students in which we serve, we want them to be able to. Well, yeah, clear pathways. This is like a fucking slam dunk. This is like literally like okay, yep. a free throw. Yeah. No, this is this is like a fucking layup from the free throw line. What the no, fuck? No, no basketball, no rap. <laughs> This is crazy. I'll talk about opportunity zones. Like, literally, like, you go to rural America, glider stand, West Virginia, Appalachia, Kentucky, Pennsylvania. You know where I'm at, Pennsylvania. They don't have shit like this for, this, for them gliders. <laughs> right. And I bet and I bet you that the more you know fun you're... Let me tell you what they got. They got a fucking army recruiter on every fucking corner for those gliders. I'm telling Man, you, that's what they got for them. I'm saying. Yo, but I, and I bet you in Baltimore, Chief, these programs, the more fucked up your record is, your background, the more opportunities you're going to get. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. For the devil. Programs to 60,000 in seven years and to ensure that at least 45% of high school students complete apprenticeship programs by 2030-31. Is that the goal for Baltimore City? That's definitely the goal for Baltimore City. We want clear pathways for our students, the students in which we serve, we want them to be able to enter the workforce as our own. I look at the diaphragm, see if any leaks, cracks, or anything that need to be replaced. Anderson appears to be on the right track. I was speechless at first because it took me a while uh, to process. Kanye Anderson told me the goal is to learn all he can on this current job with the long-term goal of eventually moving up. In North Baltimore, Tim Tootin, WBAL TV 11 News. Tim Salute to that uh, son man, though. Yeah, and he seems different. He doesn't seem like the average. No, he doesn't seem like he's on the street and shit. Yeah, he seems like a, a prime candidate for that stuff. Um, oh, shit. Maryland has the worst record in the country when it comes to imprisoned African Americans. <clears throat> no, we ain't never. No shit. No shit. I mean, it's because of their hair texture and their skin color. Yeah, and, and that inability to have access to apprenticeships and shit like that. So maybe they need 120,000 apprenticeships, man. Maybe we should make the laws according to your uh, DNA. You know, like we should make laws different for, you know, based on your your DNA, you know, your, your ethnicity. Just to make things more fair, you know? Maryland has the worst record in the country that comes to imprisoned African Americans. I say to you today that the over incarceration, the mass incarceration of black men and women in Maryland is a crisis. They are usually. <laughs> yeah, but not for the reason you think. I wonder what this suggests a solution is. I'm sure it's terrifying. Fucking Barack Obama here, man. Obama. 
literally like I can't believe he said that with a straight face, man. Like shit, man. I mean, my God, how do you say that in Baltimore with a straight face and then like literally get a round of applause and shit and then pause for the applause? Like you both to be like, oh no, sit down, sit down. It's okay. Right. It lasted two, two minutes. It lasted two minutes, bro. <laughs> Standing yeah, ovation. He just, he just stands back and takes the applause. Like, like, are you serious, man? <laughs> I say to you today that the over-incarceration, the mass incarceration of black men and women in Maryland is a crisis. They are usually on opposite sides of the courtroom, but Wednesday, Attorney General yeah, like 23 Brown, crazy. Maryland's public defender, Natasha Dartigue, teamed up to announce the creation of the Maryland Equitable Justice Collaborative. The new initiative aims to reduce the mass incarceration of African Americans and other marginalized groups. I told you. I told, I told you it was going to be terrifying. Look at those hands, man. Them hands right there. You can tell they guilty. Just their hands look guilty, man. Listen, man. Um, this, this. You talk about solutions, right? There. While you're talking, while everyone's talking about public safety and trying to like make it safer for everybody, these motherfuckers are talking about emptying the prisons. These cities are weird, man. Sunrun cities are weird because they play, they literally play both sides at all times. They're playing the they're playing the we're about to get tough on crime. We mean it, dog. There's gonna be consequences from now on for carjacking people. And then out the other side, it's like, yo, it's too many black men. Oh there. shit, I didn't realize we'd arrest black people mostly. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Like, yo, this shit is yo, this check with the like, other cities. Wait, it's like that everywhere else too. <laughs> what? Exactly, man. But isn't it counterintuitive? Like, what, like, how do you think that emptying out the jails is gonna be? Uh, like, how do you think that's gonna? It's kind of like the traffic stop thing, right, in Philadelphia, right? Remember we were talking about that recently. Yeah, it's, it's the same what, thing. What do you think's gonna happen? Yeah, I mean, they're not thinking about that. Groups sentences for black individuals are substantially higher than those imposed on white individuals for the very because the black dude has 85 arrests and the white dude may have you know like come in and maybe it's been his first fucking charge and y'all know that when y'all look at the data that's the thing about this they know that when they're looking at the data they see the data and they still get up here and lie Sentences for black individuals are substantially higher than those imposed on white individuals for the very same offenses. Nearly 80% of the people serving sentences for more than 10 years are black. Maryland incarcerates the highest percentage of African Americans in the country. The AG's office says African Americans make up about 30% of the population, but are 72% of the prison population. With the people that we have around. 3072. <laughs> and it should be more. That's the crazy part of right. it. Like, I mean, I'm surprised that whole more. crew, that whole crew of guys that's out last night robbing people in the middle of the street. <laughs> like, it was like nine of them just running up on cars, robbing people in the middle of the street. The old nine of those guys need to be in prison. That's the fucked up thing is the crisis is there aren't nearly enough black people in jail. <laughs> I mean, I know it sounds terrible, but I mean, think about yeah, it. Yeah, you know, whatever. But that's it does, it does. It does sound terrible, but I, it's true, though. Um, it's so I'm surprised true. it's not higher. I'm surprised it's not higher. I would think it'd be like 80, 85, maybe. It's also tiresome. Yo, it, it, it's so true. Like, Every, think about their 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 clothes clearance rate on their um, homicides. 
let's just say that let's just say that Clarence rate is thirty percent. Let's give them let's give them thirty percent. Let's be nice. I say they have three hundred fifty homicides a year. So that means that about ninety. Let's just say 100 are solved out of 350. That's 250 not solved year after 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 year. None of those guys are in prison for homicide. Population. With the people we have around the table, we will impact lives. We will change trajectories for families and generations to come, and we will end the seemingly nonstop, unrelenting mass incarceration of black men and women in Maryland. The collaboration hopes to develop a comprehensive plan for reform and recommendations by January 2025. Lisa Robinson, WBAL TV. According to this data I'm looking at in the UK, some people make up 3% of the population, but 30% of the prison population. And it probably should be fifty. Yeah. Hey, I and that, and that, those people we just saw on the screen, right? Those politicians. I give. I guarantee if they get what they're asking for, I down the line soon enough they're gonna be on there talking about they don't care about black folks. We're not safe. They're not doing enough to keep us safe. <laughs> like you, you, you eat it, motherfuckers. So Twine it. Congrats. Yeah. You you, so. Some people want to eat their cake and have it too in so many ways it's just insane man that it, I mean, it's so insane that that, that, he, that they're pushing this mass incarceration thing it's just it's, it's, it's insane i mean we we everyone everyone knows they're gonna get what they want it's gonna happen they're gonna let all the guys out Jalen, Jameson, Amari, and Amari, good to see all four of you. Uh, treat me as though I'm a city kid and I'm coming to Boys and Girls Club the first time. Sell me on this building. Why is it magical to you? I would say it's magical to me because it's a very important place where you feel welcome and you feel belong and you feel like you're home. You have a family of aunts. You uncles. feel welcome and belonged. <sighs> Schools. It just feels like a place to be home. It just where you feel as though you are special to everyone, and everyone knows you're special in a unique way. Exactly. It's like a bunch of siblings. Yep. Like I was saying earlier, I met Jalen at the club on my first day in the gym eight years ago, and we are still here. And you thought she was someone else. Yeah, yeah I, thought, I thought she was my grandmother's friend's granddaughter, and I was like, okay. But yeah, we're still here, and I, everybody else at the club, they're all like siblings. Uh, you all spy, we all have similar stories about how great it is to be here. But without this club, what would life be like without Boys and Girls Club? So I'm curious, it's been a long time since I was a teenager. So what, <laughs> nowadays, what would life be like for a teen without this club? I feel like life without the club would be very stressful, at least for me. Um, Coming to the club was such an eye opener for me, being able to meet new people and connect with the staff one on one. Um, it's just a, like they said, immediate family when you walk through the door. So being able to not have the club would be definitely a take a toll on me for, yeah. for sure. How'd you end up inside? Um, man, it was a, it was it was in the summer. Uh, I was just chilling, just me and some of my friends. You know, we was all just outside, and then um, it was like a big group of us, and it was like yo, you should come to the rec. I'm like, you know, what's that? They're like, you know, it's the place in the pool, you know, just come up there, you sign a little paper and then you good to go. So I instantly, I went, you know, I, I shot the idea to my mom. She was like, you know, yeah, that's cool. Go up there, 